What's up guys, it's your boy Serge. So today I wanna to talk to you about the new 5K iMac. This thing is sweet. I absolutely love this computer. And I wanna tell you that if you're considering getting it, uh, hands down, grab it. So inside this box is the new 5K iMac. This thing is awesome and I can't wait to show it to you guys. We're gonna go ahead, pull the tab here and access the contents. I was really impressed with the packaging. This is something Apple does a really good job on. Let's take a look at the keyboard. Some nice Apple branding here. Pop open the box and we have our keyboard and mouse as well as our manuals and a few other things. You also get a lightning cord to charge your accessories like your keyboard and mouse. Pop open the manual and it basically just tells you to go online. There's really not a whole lot you can do. Just toss that, it's useless. The Apple stickers, now that's one of my favorites right there. You also get a really nice Apple branded cloth to clean your screen. I actually love these things. I have like, I think three of them. All right, so it's time to add that Apple sticker to my collection. As you can see, I have quite a bit of Apple stickers. You know what, I lost count, I think after like 45. We have small ones, we have big ones. Uh, a lot of them are actually different sizes. I have some from MacBooks, 12 inch MacBook, MacBook Pro. Pretty much every device I've used, it's going into this collection here. It's pretty thick as you can see. I've always liked Apple keyboards because they don't take up a lot of space. Use the pull tab to open it up, slides right out, everything's nice and clean, very well packaged. I love the minimalist look. This is one of the keys that Apple has used for such a long time to keep their devices looking simplistic and plain. They actually almost look ugly in a way, but I do like the way that it's set up. The keyboard also features a type of wedged design that you can see. It's a little bit different from the previous ones because again, you use the lightning cord to charge it. When looking at the mouse, it kind of reminds me of like a little egg. It's about a way, like a halfway cylinder, kind of cut in half and it's actually really comfortable to use. My only grab about it is that it's not very good for gaming. But other than that, for work-related tasks, you can scroll up and down, left and right, and it works really well, because that part there is a touchpad. Thank you for watching this far. Keep watching. If you have any questions, I am answering all questions. So feel free to comment below. Thanks. When you're trying to take the iMac out, it's actually pretty difficult because everything is just enclosed in styrofoam. Uh, just remove the styrofoam there, there's about three of them. And then you also get your power cord. This thing is actually really long. Take a look at the comparison here with some of these other power cords. Even the power cord has good quality. Now that's such a weird thing. You'd think, who cares about the power cord? Well, this thing is really thick. It's rubberized, it has really good grip. It just looks really clean. I like the design of it. If you look closely, the stitching is really on point. All right, let's put this mess away and get to the iMac. So the iMac is enclosed in this cloth-like enclosure, which has a sticker that you gotta remove before you can take it off. Front glass and the back metal parts have this uh, plastic protection that you gotta take off. It is actually quite a lot of it here. Um, I don't mind taking it off once, but boy, you know, they really, really wrapped this thing. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. It takes a lot of time. That there took almost five minutes. And there you have it, the iMac. Man, this thing is sexy. It looks awesome. I love this thing. Power button is concave. That means that it's recessed a little bit, so when you're feeling it on the back, you can turn it on easily. If you look in here at the bottom, that's actually the air vent and where the sound comes from. We got a front facing uh, camera with some mics. And at the back there, you see the vent right below the hinge. Under the vent, we actually have the RAM upgrade. And then the Apple logo is actually the Wi Fi module, believe it or not. So the reason for that is the aluminum actually gets in the way of the Wi-Fi signals, so they have to put it there. When you're zooming into the power connection, there's actually a button there that if you press it, it pops open the, uh, the RAM module access point, so you can actually put in more RAM. It's actually quite ingenious. I wish more of the iMac was built this way so you could 
you know, remove the video card or pop in a new CPU. Well, I actually did a pretty nice job with ports. You have Ethernet, two Thunderbolts, you have four USB, standard SD slot, and we do have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, I wish they added a HDMI. That's my only gripe. Why don't they have HDMI? So the built-in speakers have a good dynamic range and the bass is fairly loud. You won't actually need to buy separate speakers. And it's amazing because the speakers are just tucked away. And the system itself is quite easy to move around. It's not like moving a tower. There aren't that many pieces to the iMac. It uses like a, an aluminum enclosure. There's about three or four pieces that kind of come together and then you have the screen there. Seems really flush. But I do have a question for you. What are the chances of you buying this iMac? Are you hard set on it or are you considering other devices that are similar to it? If you are, I want you to leave a comment below on what other all-in-one desktop you're considering or other device. Just let me know, okay? So when buying a new iMac, what upgrades should you get? My recommendation is do not upgrade the RAM and the CPU isn't really that important for upgrading. Uh, once we've hit the three gigahertz mark, there's really not a whole lot of reasons to upgrade. Now the thing that you should upgrade is gonna be the GPU because the difference between the lower end GPU that it comes with and the higher end GPU you can grab is, is substantial. So definitely do that. Um, for the RAM, again, just follow the links below that show you how to get the new RAM kit. That'll save you hundreds of, hundreds of dollars. So just do that. The other really important thing to consider is gonna be the SSD drive or just the overall storage. Uh, I say SSD drive because you know what? Don't bother with the slower hard drives. They are just night and day when you compare them to SSD. SSD just means solid state drive. These hard drives are 10 to 20 times faster than a conventional disc spinning drive. So whatever you do, stay away from those drives because they fail, you might end up losing your work, and they're just atrociously slow. So do yourself a big favor and get the SSD because you're not going to regret it. I wanted to talk about this particular desktop because it was really, really unique. There aren't a lot of desktops out there that you can get that are gonna have uh, the tower and the screen integrated into one. Uh, I actually used to be an Apple hater, believe it or not, but uh, because I ended up using the iPhone and then I searched for a video editing platform that happened to be uh, a lot better on the Macs, I ended up sticking with it. Uh, so in the past, I would have used uh, certain Windows applications where it would crash. It'd be just a nightmare-ish experience. And then eventually I started using Final Cut. And then recently I learned about the Adobe Premiere Pro, which actually runs on both, believe it or not. But you're not going to be able to find an all-in-one system this powerful with this kind of CPU um, and this kind of GPU in an all-in-one system. Now, people are always tell me, you know, why get the all-in-one system when it is, you know, substantially going to be gimped because you can't upgrade it, you can't really work on it. Well, the beauty of the IMAX is that you don't need to work on it. Uh, you buy it once and it lasts you a good, you know, four to eight years, maybe even longer depending on which model you get. Why service it if it doesn't need to be serviced? You know, why add that extra layer of work that doesn't need to be there? if it just works fine on its own. And that's the beauty of the IMAX is that they're really, really good quality. So you don't need to service them. Buy it once and just forget about it. There's still quite a lot of people that are gonna tell you that the iMac is still very overpriced. And while I do agree with most people and how they think about that process, what they don't seem to understand is that the SSD inside this iMac is extremely fast. Actually, it's considered among one of the fastest. Uh, most SSDs use the SATA technology, which is a lot slower. This one has the PCIe, which is uh, almost four to five times faster. You're getting about a gig of read and write, which is great. Uh, so, you, so you do get what you pay for in this particular scenario. The reason I picked this particular iMac was because I really liked the idea of having a 5K screen. I wanted to be able to edit my videos uh, within a 4K uh, window, but also still have my timeline. 
So what I'm doing is I'm getting ready to do 4K video editing in the future. But because of this, I can see the actual image, what it will look like inside the timeline without having uh, a loss in image quality. A lot of people tell me, why don't you just get a different phone on one computer that's not gonna cost you $2,000 or $3,000 or $4,000? Well, the thing is, you're not gonna be able to find a computer with a unibody design, all aluminum construction that's clean and looks and feels really sturdy. Um, you're also not gonna find a powerful GPU and a powerful CPU uh, like the ones found in the IMAX. Like with this particular model that I have here, this has the 6700K running at 4.2 gigahertz. That's pretty fast. That's as fast as you'd ever need your computer to be. If you're still thinking, well, why don't you just get a different all in one like from Dell or from a different company like Asus or Asus? Uh, well, my question to you guys is, do they come with the, uh, the M395X? Uh, if they do, then maybe I would consider getting them. But then, you know, you, you look at the overall design of their all-in-ones and it's just ugly. You know, it's got cheap plastic or the metal housing buckles when you press on it. Um, it's just, I, I'm just not feeling the quality with these other all-in-ones. So I decided to get this particular iMac because I felt like it was a really good design and it would be something that I would use for a long time. I really like the idea of having just one cord to power all of my systems. So in the past, I would have had my gamer tower, which was this big, bulky tower by Antec. Uh, and then I'd have my monitor, and then I also have my speakers, and I have all these cords, and I have my mouse and all that. So with the iMac system, everything is integrated, and everything is promoted to be wireless. So it's such a minimalist setup that you almost never see any wires, and you save a ton of space. Um, when you take into consideration that the tower uh, and the screen are put together, as well as the speakers, and you ask yourself, well, how much does this thing weigh? Actually, it doesn't really weigh that much. You can grab it with one hand and you can walk with it. Uh, so if you're going to like a LAN party or if you're going to like a business meeting or something and you have to take it with you, you actually do have that ability. I also wanted to share with you guys a secret that I learned. Uh, don't pay 600 bucks to the Apple store for the particular RAM upgrades when you can just follow these links here and you can get the 32 gig RAM for approximately anywhere from 200 to $300 instead of paying the $600 price tag. So follow the links below if you want to take a look at that. I will also be doing a detailed gaming tests on this iMac and I can tell you that the future is looking bright for gaming on the iMac. The earlier model of the iMacs, uh, the, the first gen 5K iMac had tons of throttling issues. You really couldn't game on it. Uh, but with this new iteration, they finally fixed the thermal throttling problems that they were having. So you shouldn't be running into that problem any longer. For those of you who are interested in seeing a detailed gaming test of this computer, I want you to follow this link. I'm gonna test the top five games and I might even have a part two version where I test 10 or 20 more games that you guys want me to test on this iMac because some games may not run well. I do, I have been doing these game tests for quite some time. It's something I do really like to do and enjoy. So if you have, if you do want to check out that video, go ahead and click on that link and I'll see you in that video. So what are some of the things that I did not like about this iMac? Well, the first thing I can think of uh, is actually the mouse. I really like the mouse and I also really don't like it at the same time. The mouse is, is optimized for doing work, but it's not optimized for playing video games. So in a game like FPS games, for instance, Natural Selection 2 or Counter-Strike, uh, when you're trying to do a right click, it can be sometimes very difficult because the touch sensors don't quite, they can't quite tell whether you're doing a right click or a left click. Uh, so gaming on the Magic Mouse is not exactly the greatest thing. But for games that don't require the right click, it's a pretty good mouse that works just fine. Personally, I would have loved to see a more mechanical-like keyboard uh, from Apple. Now, the thing is, the keyboard that it already comes with is pretty good. It is one of my favorites. I like that it's minimalist. I like how small it is, yet it packs you know, a full-sized keyboard. Uh, unfortunately, it does not come with a number pad, which I would have liked to see. 
uh, but my main gripe is it's not mechanical. Now, because of that, uh, there can be times when you're typing the, and you press a button, it sometimes doesn't go down all the way, which might register a misclick and you might not actually have clicked that button. Uh, but because they have reduced the travel between the keys, now you can type lighter and it actually goes through and so it does get recorded. Uh, in previous versions of the Apple keyboards, it was easier to do misclicks. Now it's not so, so much easier to do. It's actually quite hard to do. But having said that, uh, since it's Apple, I always want the best quality possible. So I would like to see that in the future. Since this particular iMac does not have the same throttling issues that the previous 5 Gen iMacs had with the 295X, uh, I can't really say that this is a downside, but I really wish that they added a bigger fan on the iMac, just so it can get cooled a little bit more. Either add two fans or just make the fan bigger. Uh, I really don't care too much about the noise because the noise level is actually pretty good. I, I can't quite complain about that. But I know that if you are gonna be gaming uh, or doing some kind of intense video editing tasks, the fan can ramp up a bit, uh, but it's definitely not as bad as the previous gen uh, 5K iMac, so keep that in mind. Where is the HDMI? That was another thing that I was really kind of irks me inside when I think about it. Uh, they do have the Thunderbolt, and I understand Apple's thought process. They want you to buy the Thunderbolt-based accessories and monitors and monitor cables and that kind of thing. But the thing is, you know, there are so many HDMI devices out there. I would like to be able to use my HDMI cord instead, uh, and I don't necessarily want to buy a Thunderbolt-based device. Uh, I do like Apple, but I also like other brands, you know, like Dell and uh, Razer. And I would like to be able to just have lots of different brands instead of just be, you know, dedicated to one brand. That's what Apple wants you to do. They, they want you to stick to the Apple scoop. But the thing is, there's some products I really like from Apple and some that I don't. So I really want them to stop trying to lock you in and give us more ports. For those of you who have the older 2013 iMac uh, and are wondering if you should upgrade to this new one, uh, I can tell you two things. Realistically, you know, one, the screen is gorgeous. It's definitely worth the upgrade. And you are gonna see a speed bump in my video editing tasks on the 2600K versus the 6700K. Uh, when I'm applying filters, when I'm applying text, it renders almost twice as fast which is a very significant and noticeable difference. I'm not sure how they managed to do that. I understand the new CPU architecture definitely is gonna improve uh, how fast and efficient these chips are, but boy was I surprised. Uh, the newer software does take advantage of the hardware. Also, the, the new M395X chip is actually substantially stronger than the 780M. There's not a lot of good benchmarks that show this performance, but I can tell you this. Uh, when I used to be able to run Grand Theft Auto on high graphics with somewhat low resolution of 1680 by 1050, now I can run in, in 2K resolution uh, on pretty much everything maxed. So there's a pretty big difference there. I used to be able to play some of my favorite games on, you know, just kind of mildly 1080p on high graphics. Now I can play my games on ultra graphics with 2K res uh, smoothly. So that to me is a huge upgrade. But is your 2013 27-inch iMac all of a sudden obsolete? No, it's not. Uh, I would say that if you feel like you're still getting use out of your you know, 2013 edition, just hold on to it. It's still a really, really good device. But if you're like me and you want to be on the cutting edge and you want to have the latest and greatest, definitely upgrade and get that new computer. But whatever you do, do not buy the older model that has the 295X. Uh, graphics chip because that one throttles, it slows down the CPU, it slows down the GPU. Uh, that particular iMac has had tons of issues. It may just be the most problematic iMac ever built. So stay clear of that one. If you haven't had the 2012 edition iMac with the 680MX graphics chip and you're wondering, should you get this new iMac? Uh, well, the thing is, your iMac is still also good. Uh, the 2012, 2013 edition, there actually isn't that big of a difference in performance. Again, if you like to stay on the cutting edge, get the latest and greatest, but it's really not gonna be you know, that big of a deal unless you really care about gaming or you wanna take advantage 
of the AMD graphics processing units for things like video editing because they do take advantage of that a lot more on the AMD GPUs than the NVIDIA ones. So I gotta tell you, I'm really glad that you've watched this far because uh, that means that uh, you are the type of person that absolutely loves this kind of video. Uh, so I really do want to help you out uh, and make a really awesome video that you're going to enjoy watching. So uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, my closing thoughts are that uh, I really do like the iMac a lot. Uh, and I believe that it's a great computer system. Um, I've seen a lot of them last for a really long time. And if you're looking to buy something and just forget about it, just buy it, have it and have it be good at pretty much everything it does, the, look no further because the iMac is going to do it for you. That's the end of this review and I want to thank you for watching. Take care. I want you to know that I'm committed to making the best YouTube videos out there. Uh, I have been watching all the latest tech reviewers and analyzing what I could do better with my video. I feel like a lot of them don't really give you, you know, the positives and negatives, and they're really kind of, you know, uh, kind of wish-washy on what they believe. Uh, I'm really trying to craft this channel and do a really good job. So if you want to be a part of this community, you should definitely subscribe because you're the type of person I want to watch these types of videos.